What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing uh, fabulous this weekend. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover a little bit of how I use my Trend Spider. Um, I, I do get a lot of questions about all the updates and things of that nature that come in all the time for Trend Spider. Um, these guys have made a fabulous or phenomenal, I guess you could say, charting software that really uh, changes the trading game, I guess, for a lot of different traders. Um, and, and there's so many different tools and aspects to the software that I, I, I'm going to touch on the most um, specific ones that really work for me and the ones I kind of go after. But you guys, there's a seven, seven day free trial with this software. So you guys can go in and sign up and, and try it out for free for seven days. Um, they, they'll even expand it a little bit further if you need a little more time than the seven days as well. Very helpful guys. Um, but anyway, I want to go ahead and cover in a little bit how you're going to chart a specific setup. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, computerized trend lines that you guys can actually use up here just by hitting the trend button. And it's gonna pull these up automatically and it's gonna give you an idea, okay, well these stocks are following a specific trend. And these trends guys are very beneficial to understanding a roadmap to the stock that you're trading. So if you guys are curious to know, where's this stock gonna bump its head? Where's it gonna you know, come down to or, or bounce off of uh, support resistance, things of that nature. If you guys don't understand it, um, you know, th there's a learning curve to everybody of how they understand this stuff when it comes to charting. But technical analysis is literally understanding what has happened in the past of this particular chart. And you're trying to study what it's going to do in the future. And trend lines have been very valuable to me over the past years of me using trends as my way of a roadmap to understand where a specific stock could be headed or where it could hit resistance. Cause I trade a lot of options and of course I'm betting on the upside or the downside of the stock uh, fulfilling those contracts of options that I'm purchasing for. So the more I understand it, the better I can obviously profit from it. So with that being said, uh, trend spider has made a, a computerized algorithm of some kind that actually portrays the trend lines based on two points of contact to draw a trend line. The more points of contact are touched on a trend line, the more prominent that trend line becomes. Okay. So when you, when you see these points of contact, like you've got a candle right here, it's bumped here and it's bumped here. You've got an angle of a trend line that becomes drawn. Same as you've got a point of contact here, point of contact here, and a little bit of one right there. You've got a trend line that's drawn. So I used to manually have to do this over and over again to prepare myself for the following day. But Trend Spiders made it so easy to be able to just do this at a glance and, and you've got trend lines already drawn in place of any chart that you guys wanna actually go overlook. So with that being said, it makes it very easy. And if you don't see the correct trend lines that you see in place that you wanna have more of them, well, they've got a lot of tools that you can actually change the setting. Now, as far as my trend settings here, I use the standard and I want to have my trend lines actually hit the wick of the stock and what I rep or the wick of the candle. What I, what I mean by the wick of the candle is that little stem that touches the, the trend line versus the actual body of the stock being the fat part of that candle. So you can do it however way you feel prominent to your trading style. But to me, I, I, I like the, whole, the all, you know, the entire price action being that wick. Uh, showing that the stock has come down to that particular spot and bounced um, the price action bounced there for a reason. It's just not just out of the blue that it decided to take care of that area. So also gaps, um, be respectful on gaps. You can actually change this to ignore the gaps. Uh, you can change this to body open and close of the candle instead of the high and low of the wicks. For I prefer the wicks. You've got also different trend line examples. I use standard you can change things to enhance and it's gonna add extra trend lines in there. This may be more prominent to your style of trading. Now, of course, you can right click on, uh, actually you can go to settings here and I believe you can change um, the style of candles here actually, or the style of trend lines, the thickness. Um, I'd have to dig into that a little bit more. But with that being said, you've got your trend lines here. You can have them set however you want. Um, you've got the enhanced, you've got the original and the original looks like this. It's another set of trend lines, but to me, I like my, I like my standard, nothing, nothing fancy, but there's something within what they represent and what, you know, what I need to do it. And now you can do this obviously on all time frames. So if you go down to, you know, scalping time frames like a, you know, two minute chart, it can be very beneficial. And as the chart is moving, you know, a two minute candle is 
two minutes of time. So every candle represents two minutes of the specific chart. There's obviously more, more, more noise than what a daily candle is going to give you. So with that being said, it makes it very easy to, you know, see where the stock could bounce on a two minute, but you got to realize not all stocks are going to, you know, respect a two minute trend line. Okay. That's why I say it's good to back things up a little bit. Um, you know, chart may respect five minute candles versus a two minute candle in that time period, even a 10 minute. But if you guys want to see all the time frames, because you know, all the time frames are very beneficial to me, you can throw up as much as two charts up here. I can have a, you know, a two minute on one side and maybe a daily on the other side. So I understand where the trend lines, the stock could be, you know, hitting resistance at hitting support at, and I know there's a potential chance of the stock bouncing at that particular price of, you know, bank of America, an example here, 2633 area. Um, it's got resistance obviously up here around this 2653. So it could obviously climb its way back up there and potentially bounce off of it. Or if it has strength with volume, it's going to push on through it. And of course you're going to end up having another trend line that will go beyond this. Uh, whenever you hit the refresh button right here. So make sure you hit that refresh button after trend lines are broken through. Uh, with that being said, I can throw up a daily chart over here on the right side. And very quickly, I understand, okay, well, I've, on a daily resistance, I've got some up here at 29 and support, I've got some down here at 2454. But guys, you can actually change this to even further uh, implement something that's even better. So with this being said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a daily time frame here. And let's just say I need more lines. I want, I want some closer resistance, some closer support trend lines that could potentially be beneficial to my trading style. So with that being said, you got trend lines up here. You can show most relevant or even more lines or all the lines that the computer pulls out. So with this said, I'll throw up more lines and voila, there you go. You've got more lines that are showing up and they're not going to be there permanent until you want to make them permanent. Okay. So with that being said, I don't want all this clutter on my screen, but I want to have that specific trend line. Let's just say this trend line, the big, the orange one there is not relevant to what I want to trade. I can right click on it and remove that trend line. Okay. Now that trend line has been removed. I have no reason for it there anymore, but you know, I want to have this other trend line that could be more prominent. That's closer to the price action. So all I got to do is double click on it. What do you know? It's there permanently. Now um, let's just say I want to double click on this one here. And voila, I can go back and click most relevant. And what do you know? Those lines are specifically tailored there to where you decided to have them. Um, so you want to be more beneficial that that line is going to be relevant to what you're looking at as far as price section that is closer to resistance. So right away, I see we got a daily resistance at 27.75 and as low as a support down here, 24.43. Now, this is a daily time frame, So each candle represents one day. Now, if I want to add more trend lines to this, obviously you can go to all the trend lines that they have. And of course, it's going to pull any of the ones that you may have deleted as well, because they're always going to be up here. Um, and you can stretch things out and be like, okay, well, I want to have more. So I'll double click that one. I'll double click this one um, and maybe double click that one. And now I've got a little bit closer time frames of what could beneficially be the next day. Obviously, you're going to add more clutter to your screen, but guy, by all means, guys, don't overwhelm it so much that you don't understand where the stock could bounce or uh, hit support or resistance off. So with that being said, the computer is picking up two points of contact that make a trend line. It's bounced there. Uh, it's bounced right here. And uh, I don't know if it's bounced any further. Oh, yeah, we got a bounce right there where it was a resistance. So three points of contact made that trend line. That's why it's prominent. This one right here could be a bounce right there, a bounce right there. Um, it looks like about two, three, four, five bounces are roughly on that line right there. Uh, point of resistance right there as well. Let's circle it, maybe you guys can see it a little better. Also right there as well. So that line was drawn due to respect of candles or daily candles that have bounced or hit it as a support or resistance. So with that being said, um, I love to use the computerized trend lines that TrendSpider does offer you guys. But if you're someone who wants to actually draw your own trend lines and understand things a little bit way, you can do that as well. But it's kind of funny how in tune they are to the computerized versions as well. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cook the, tre the trends off. And of course, when you take trends off, it's still going to put your most prominent ones that you put on there. If you don't want these trend lines, you can all by all means remove all of them 
and they're gone there as well. But you can obviously go put them back when you start going back to all the lines and implementing double clicking them back on there. If you wise, you know, still want to have them on there, they're not deleted there forever. Um, but with that being said, uh, I'll just show you a little bit of the toolbar here on the left side that really is helpful for me um, to help me be able to do, you know, more with what I want to do on trend line. So with this being said, let's just say you want to draw your own trend line, be like, okay, well, we've got two points of contact in order to make a trend line. I'll draw one right there. That's a point of resistance that we've hit on June 5th and also on August 11th. So pretty recently, that's a fairly recent resistance point. Let's say I want to have a support line and let's just say I want to draw it from the bottom here. And that's about as far up as I can go because what do you know? I've got a point of contact here, a point of contact there, and a point of contact here. I've got three points of contact that shows that this line could be very prominent as a support uh, line for Bank of America here. So that being said, maybe I want to throw in another line. So I'll put from here to about right there. I can't really go up any higher because I've got a point of contact. Um, let me get my little pencil up here, right here and right here. So I've got two points of contact that draw that line. So that's probably as far as I need to stay away from it. So trend lines, as you guys know, go in different angles, okay? They're not straight left and right as a horizontal trend line would be. These are, you know, up and down, angled, whatever trend lines you want to call them as, that represents support or resistance over a period of time. Obviously, you can throw up some more, as many as you want, just by clicking this little bar up here, uh, draw the trend line, or you can press Alt uh, plus R and draw it as well. But with this being said, I can draw one straight from down here and have that as another line as well. But without cluttering the screen too much, you kind of want to know where these candles are headed, where the resistance, where the support lines can really play an, an important role for you. Like I said, this is all live action, okay? When this happens during the trading day of the market open, you know, these trend lines will play an important role. When you start seeing a candle coming down to a support trend line, you don't think, oh, well, I want to short this stock past that trend line. Well, you probably can if you if it decides to have more selling strength than you know, you anticipate, then go by all means, you know, play it down as hard as you want. But you have to respect the trend lines, guys. Buyers are going to come into a point to where the point that the stock is going to bounce and it's going to hit its head there. It's going to come back down. It's going to bounce. And you want to really play it out very respectfully, okay? We can't obviously, you know, make the market go the way we want it to, but we understand where the market has been and where it could possibly be headed. So with that being said, I'll throw up some horizontal. You're gonna use this little tool on the left side right here. Now, obviously I wanna know that we hit our head right here at 2904. You just click it there and it's right there. Um, also, let's just say this little spot right here, I'll go ahead and draw it all off to the left here so I can see that a little bit easier to see it. But we've got a point of contact right here. Horizontal lines only need one point of contact, guys. You don't need to have two, but obviously more is better than one. Um, but with that being said, even the open and close of the body of the candle can represent as the opening day, you know, of the of a green candle. An opening day is at the bottom and the close of the day is at the top. Okay. Same with the red. The opening of the day was at the top and the close of the day was at the bottom. Obviously, it had price action below the close of the day, but that's where you got to respect the wicks versus the body of the candle. So I can hit this tool up here and hit multiple times that wherever we closed on specific candles, I know that that's gonna be a resistance or support line. So that being said, I've got two points of contact. I've got one candle here, and I've got one candle right here, okay, that's bumped it. It's been a resistance point. We broke through it obviously right here, but with that being said, it could come on down a little bit lower and then maybe fight it again on another day. So with that being said, I'll add some more candles in here. So further down, let's just say I wanna go right here, I've got a support or I've got a resistance right here from two candles and also one candle right here. So I've got three, no, I've got one, two, three, four points of contact or five points of contact that that line has been prominent to the price action of Bank of America here. Um, so even though we're below that price action, we went below it, I still want to have a line down there just in case it decides to fall. So I'm probably going to throw a line in about right there. Um, reason why is because we've got a point of resistance there and a point of support uh, three times right there. So four points of contact really draws that line or makes it more prominent that it could potentially come down here and maybe bounce off of it. Obviously, we fell a little bit below that particular line and obviously it was a reason because of that uh, as a 
opening day on what particular day was that june 17th that op that opening day acted as support for august 14th to bounce off that stock off that off that price um so with that being said you can actually highlight let's just say you want to draw this area this is a draw area highlight um, so you can click the box there and let's just say I want to highlight this area. You click one time, uh, I can pull it down to here and then click two times and you've got a highlighted area. And voila, you've got a chart that is a little bit clear to understand that potentially you understand the roadmap of where the stock is going just by hand drawing the technical analysis of this chart. Right away, I can see these price numbers here on the left side that would display that, okay, the stock is bumped here. It's acted as a resistance in the past. It's acted as support and, and resistance here in the past based off of these two candles and also off of this one candle. The further I go down, the more points of contact I got. So I have 2616 right here acted as a point of resistance. Also, if you guys haven't noticed here, I can go to the left side of the screen and this candle right here acted on the exact same line right here. So you see it where I'm touching there, I'm touching the 2616 point of contact here point of contact there, point of contact here, and also on this little red red candle right there. So obviously it does take some time if you wanna hand draw them, they can be very you know beneficial to you obviously. And you know adding these tools in here makes it so, so wonderful for us guys that really use the charts for our roadmaps, understand where our stock is headed and where it's come from to better get a picture of where we can look at as a, as a breakthrough of resistance or a breakthrough of support and play the options contracts that would display the beneficials of Bank of America. Obviously bank stocks are probably gonna get hot here pretty soon. Um, there are definitely laggards in the market right now, um, but they've put up some pretty good numbers here as of you know since the 1st of July, all the way up in here to the middle of August of where we currently are at the time of this recording. So with that being said, guys, you can understand it. You can play that out. I also like to draw my gaps, okay? These are, these are where stocks may, may have closed the previous day and then opened uh, where the price action would, you know, traded in after hours and pre-market, but opened way lower causing a gap. So I like to draw these little gaps right here. And let's just say I want to draw a gap right there that shows me have a gap there. Um, we've got a tiny little gap right there. Um, because the candles are not overlapping each other or touching other, each other. So it causes a price action gap um, that a lot of stock traders like to see fill. We've got a small one, a very, very small one right there. Um, we've also got a bigger one right here where we've got, you know, this candle here and this candle where they don't overlap. Um, but, you know, Bank of America's got a lot of gaps right here. So let's just say I've got one right here. Oh, that's the wrong highlighter. Hang on. Um, I'll use this one right here. So, come on. Small little gap right there. Nothing, nothing fancy, but as, as gap traders, a lot of stock traders like to see gaps get filled. And in order to make a gap get filled, Obviously you need to have stock chart that comes up here and all of a sudden fills that gap. So this gap would no longer be prominent because the chart came back up and it filled that gap. It's come back down, up and down. Obviously there's a lot of little gaps in here. You guys can play gaps however you want to, um, but you wanna see them get filled. This one right here, we obviously had a little gap right here, but the stock, since it came back down here, it filled that gap. That gap is no longer a gap that needs to be filled. Now, if you guys want to put, add some text here, obviously hit the TX right there. And you guys can just say, you know, type in gap, okay? And you can add that little, you know, that little text wherever you want to. And it's like, okay, throwing up a little gap section there. That makes things beneficial. Now, obviously, if you go obviously to the left side of the screen, you want to give a little bit of a presentation of where the stock could be headed. You guys can use this little button right here to draw the polyline. And let's just say that, uh, you know, you think the stock could come up here and then back down here, back up here, down here, and then maybe break through right there and give yourself a little demonstration of where the stock could be headed, however you want to look at it um, and play it out one step at a time. Every push has to have a pullback. Stocks don't go straight up. So with that being said, you've got yourself rather a charted stock. And let's just say you want to, you know, throw it out there on Twitter. You can just hit the little share button up here, which is a little camera. 
and you guys can, you know, it'll process your chart a little bit here. You can copy and paste the link or just share it directly to Twitter. And obviously you just hit tweet and voila, it's right on your Twitter account. And even your stock quits. Um, however you guys want to display that. Some other tools I want to add in here, guys, is indicators. You can add any kind of indicator in here. And an indicator is, you know, something I like to use very, I guess, I'm not a huge indicator trader, but I will throw up some indicators in there to give, you know, a little bit more of a respected idea of where the stock is going. Um, but volume underlay, I love to have the volume underlay. Um, another indicator you guys can add is obviously exponential moving averages, which is EMAs. Um, I like, I kind of like this five and eight. Um, it's not something I use a lot, but it's something I think has been pretty cool. Uh, someone introduced this uh, particular setup of indicators to me to show that where a stock begins to buy and where a stock begins to sell is when they cross, okay? So when you see, when I zoom in here, and let's just say I wanna look at where the five EMA and the eight EMA is, as you guys see, the eight is red and the five is this lime green. So knowing right here, whenever they cross, this, is, this becomes a buy signal. So they go up here and you never see it cross until it comes right there. So this becomes a sell signal and it just shows selling in that point. So if you would have used the indicator as a buy or sell signal, it would have showed you to buy a call here, sell the call there, or buy a put in reverse. Uh, with this being said here, they crossed here. It shows buy a call, um, get rid of the call roughly between these two points right here. So that would have been a trade uh, from this point, from this price action to this price action. So however you wanna use it, obviously this is on a daily chart, but let's just say we throw this up on a two minute chart or five minute really. Um, and you see these white lines on the, on the, on the, on the chart here. This was where obviously where I drew them up on the daily. Okay. So you can actually, sh it'll actually show up on your five minute chart and you know exactly. Okay. Well, let me throw up a second chart next to it and let's throw this up as the daily. And you see those horizontal lines act even on your five minute chart here. It's like, okay, well the stock has played between these two lines. Now let's see how they act on a five minute chart. And as you see how they act on the, on the daily here, they're pretty dang prominent of where it bumped its head here. It's uh, hit support right here. It's hit resistance here, resistance here. They act pretty accurately even on a five minute chart based off of the daily action of where I drew them there. So with that being said, I'll just go back to one chart. So we got a little bit more demonstration of what's going on here. Um, you guys, as I'll say, I'll go ahead and zoom this in again. Even on a five minute chart, let's just say you're scalping or you're day trading um, and you see a, a position, you know, you see the stock selling off and all of a sudden the five and the 80 EMA cross right here. It shows this is a buy signal. Um, so with that being said, you would buy their call. You see it never cross, never cross until about right here it looks like we had some low volume they pretty much crossed right there so that would have got you a buy and trade right there and a sell in trade right there okay now obviously we went up a little bit higher looks like um but it wasn't nothing beneficial if you have if you hung on through this little section you would have got another sell signal right there so that's kind of why i'll throw up that five and eight ema you know you would have had a trade from this price to that price um, so, you know, it gives you a little bit of signal. That's 2623 roughly, and that's 2658. So it gave you a price and buy and sell. Now, obviously when you start looking at stocks like Tesla, you know, some high volatile stocks, things like that will change, obviously. Um, let's just type in Tesla, for example, big stock, big boomer, you know, makes a lot of money for a lot of day traders who love to play this. Um, let's just say we want to throw up a... Yeah, even up a daily chart here. I've got this thing pegged out as well. So I, I, I understand where it's coming from um, as well. So with that being said, looking at this five and eight, eight, five and eight EMA indicator, we almost got across there. I wouldn't technically really call that a cross when I stretch it out. Uh, it looks like they bumped heads there, but not really any crossing. Um, but if you go down as far as where it did cross the very first time was right here, okay? So you got some crossage right there. I'm actually gonna throw this up on a, use a little circle thing. So right there was where entry was, okay? So we'll go and just say, we'll just type it entry on a EMA, five EMA cross. And that would have been your entry due to the crossing right there. 
Well, you see the price action was 500 bucks, 499. Where are we at now? You know, I see no point of it crossing as a sell signal until about right here looks like. And that's at 1500 bucks. You it left a thousand dollars, gave you a signal right there showing that a thousand dollar move would have made some beneficial, some serious gains right there. So I'll go ahead and show that up right there just because my little zoom, uh, um, drawings don't really show up. So when I pull this chart back, that's where you would have bought your entry and sold your, uh, your calls up, up, up here. And obviously in that time frame, it was what April 6th to July 28th. Obviously if you had, you know, some November, October, even August, late August calls, you would have done very well had you bought an option way down here and sold the option way up here, just based off the five and the ADMA. It's kind of funny how that indicator can actually play out. Obviously there's gaps to fill down here. We'll see how Tesla plays out. I'm, I'm pretty bullish on this stock for the meantime, as we're breaking some serious upside volume. Um, you know, obviously they've got some S and P 500 inclusion coming up as well. Um, so a lot of stuff coming in for Tesla, but this is just a very <laughs> bold example, I guess, just to give you guys of how that indicator, you know, can work out. But anyway, I just kind of want to show you in this video of how I use my trend spider, why I think it's a really useful tool, um, why I like it. Um, you can also throw in patterns. Okay. So if you like particular candlestick patterns, um, you know, four green candles, four red candles, abandoned baby, um, different dragonfly dojis and golfing candles, things of that nature. If you want to see the patterns, it actually will pull out these candlesticks for you. Spinning tops, four green candles, uh, engulfing candles. Um, so when you throw up patterns like that, it's going to throw out actual, you know, candles that represent that particular pattern. Um, so however you guys want to treat that, I'll throw it up there just sometimes just to see these candles because each candle represents a reason behind it. Um, I teach this obviously in my classes, how to read candlesticks. Um, how different candles portray a reversal, uh, portray, portray a continuation, things of that nature. Um, also, they've got pre-market and after hours, which is it's a little button right here, non-regular trading hours. You can hit that and I'll actually do non-regular trading hours. Let's say we throw it up on a five minute chart and this little section was after hours on Friday. Um, this section right here was pre-market on Friday. Um, after hours on Thursday, but you get the drift. It, it, it adds that extra charting that went on during pre-market to cause that gap up or gap down when actual market happened. So there's a gap there. Um, take the indicators off. There's a gap right there that you would have gotten in had you added the non-trading hours, which was this section of time right here, this, this, this greenish fade uh, on the chart. Um, even you can add such things like the highlighted breakouts. Um, you know, whenever a trend line is broken, you can hit that little button and it shows where the chart, you know, broke a trend line or thing of that nature. Um, so very useful tool, I guess, if you want to add a little extra something in there. Um, something else I want to touch on guys here. Let's just say I wanted a, an alert. Okay. This is a little bell up here. I get alerts all the time. It actually sends it to my email. It sends it to my um, cell phone. However, whenever you sign up for the account, it's going to, you know, you're obviously going to put in your email or your cell phone number and they'll actually send you an alert wherever you decide for the stock to alert you. So let's just say you've got a, a big watch list over here on the right side. You know, you can set up watch lists. I've got many watch lists that I've got set up for different sectors. You know, I like to keep tabs on the earnings plays for each week, airlines, banks, cruise lines, you know, all these different sectors of how, you know, beneficial they can help me out, you know, better for the week. So that being said, I want to understand, uh, I want to get an alert because there's so many stocks that I can't just look at them all the time. Uh, so with that being said, I can right click on a trend line, right click on a horizontal line here and create an alert at this line. Okay. So let's just say I want to get alerted when Tesla breaks 1685 right here. Okay. And just to give you an example that you see that faded area there or that, that um, greenish line, you know, added there. This is, I want to get alerted when it fires, when a candle starts touching within $16 or I can pull it down. Obviously it goes thinner and thinner or thicker and thicker, however you want to do it there. Uh, but let's just say I want to fire whenever it touches within $6. Okay. Or you can even click it to break through or touch or even bounce or all three. Um, but with that being said, let's just say I want to do it when it touches it because we've got a point of uh, resistance on that line. There's a reason why that line may play a point of resistance going into, you know, opening tomorrow. 
um, let's just say I want to have a 10 minute candle. That's the minimum you can do on alerts is 10 minute candles. You can't put alerts on a two minute or five minute candle. So 10 minutes, make sure you guys are understanding that. And let's just say, you know, buy calls on breakout. And I want to give myself 30 days for that, uh, you know, that alert to, um, you know, delete itself. And let's just say you want to get, you know, you want it to trigger one time. You want it to alert you one time, five times, 10 times, 20 times, whatever. Um, you know, let's just say five times If it comes through there, bounces back down through there. However, it wants to play out and you create the alert and automatically you've got an alert set whenever the stock wants to break through or, you know, alert you when you're not paying attention to it to say, Hey, you know, Mike, pay attention to me. I just hit the, you know, your alert line that you set for me you know, why did you have the alert set there? Well, it was a reason because the stock caused you interest you wanted to grab into that potential. But anyway, you can send trend lines from the diagonal ones, the horizontal, however you end up setting those up there. Um, you can also throw it in there. Another useful tool guys is they've got scanners. Um, it's kind of unique. Obviously I use a lot of different tools out there for scanners. Um, level two trading areas. They don't have level two, obviously. It's just a charting tool, but this is the handiest charting tool you're going to ever find. Uh, but anyway, they got this button up here. Well, actually, I'll, I'll display what the sidebar is. This sidebar right here is on the right side. Obviously, you got your watch list. You can add or remove different widgets. I've got a watch list and news. Um, let's just say I want to add a new widget and you can put alert. Your alerts up here instead of the little bell. Analyst reviews, notes. You can put up notes or even seasonality or watch list or scanner. Um, for now, I've got that, you know, set up the way I want to, um, to where I've got news for Tesla stock, whatever stock I pull up, Bank of America, it's going to pull up news for Bank of America. Um, it's going to pull news for um, MMC right here, Marsh and McLean Company. So it's got news, anytime news gets hit for this, this is all from Bazinga Pro, okay? This is a really great news source um, for a lot of news channels that wants to come through on Bazinga. It gets displayed on your trend spider. It's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, uh, market scanner. Okay. This is something that you guys can play with. You can set parameters for the scanner. Um, just to give you a little example here, let's just say here's a 20 day breakout scanner. Um, there's reasons, you know, daily price close, you set the parameters they are already preset. You can save them. Uh, let's just say I want it to scan the S and P 500 index for maybe a 20 day breakout low. Um, and I hit scan and voila, there's one stock that comes up and that's MU. Okay, so it broke its 20 day low, showing that it's decided to fall and it's pulled out of this wedge from where I had <laughs> some lines drawn in a previous time period. So that stock shows me that it's broken a 20 day low and it's falling. Okay, so maybe I'll have to rechart this and analyze it that it could potentially be a stock for later revisit. Um, also, first green day. Some people like to have a, a scanner that screens a you know, first green day. I've obviously got this one saved with the parameters that make that scanner work. I hit scan. Let's see if there's any stocks that pull up on the S&P 500. No, there is none on the S&P 500 with a first green day. Let's just say I go to another sector. Um, let's go to the NASDAQ. You'll probably find one in there. Uh, yeah, 2,500. NASDAQ composite. Let's scan there now. Let's see if we find a stock. Okay, there's a couple pulling up here that's had first green days. Um, I'll just give you an example here with a bus. Okay. So it's had a multitude of red days looks like in a period of time. And all of a sudden of uh, the past week here or six red candles in a row, we finally have a green day. And that was on Friday showing that this stock may potentially start turning around. Uh, COOP, lots of red days. All of a sudden the first green day in the past uh, five candles, six candles, so that's, that's, that's how I got it set up. Obviously you could change this to 10 candles, 20 candles, 50 candles, whatever. Obviously stocks aren't going to have 50 red candles in a row. I wouldn't assume on a daily chart anyway. Um, so you can set this up in a parameters that would best fit you. So this stock shows that it's got a green candle after consecutive one, two, three, four, five, six red days in a row. <laughs> Excuse me. So pulling up all these other stocks, MNRA consecutive red days all of a sudden friday we got a green day is this stock ready to bounce off as a support line chart it out play the trends understand where it's coming from and you it may potentially provide you a play for the following day first red day uh, no i do not want to save this 
let's just say I want to pull up first red day. And let's say for screen, are you sure you want to proceed? Yes. So let's say I want to do a scan on a first red day. Okay. It's the same, same criteria, just reversed. And let's say I want to scan the S&P 500 for stocks with first red day. Okay, well, not many choices, just one where a stock had a consecutive green days in a row, and all of a sudden, that one candle on Friday decided to be a red day. Is this a spot that is showing the stock is hitting resistance and it wants to start pulling back some more? Potentially could. Obviously, you can search all different indexes and get your guys' as more of a pick on potential scanners for that being said. Um, but anyway, I won't really cover too much of this, but there is a lot of tools you guys can use with this. Like I said, it is a lot to take in. I want you guys to definitely play with it. Um, it's very beneficial. If you go to your profile over here, they've actually got a Trend Spider University. It's got a ton of videos that you guys can go look through. They're all in different sections of it. Um, the guys here from Trend Spider actually set up a live one-on-one -on -one with you guys if you want to set up one. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and they'll actually take you through tutorials and train you guys how to use their software. Um, by all means, as a referral to you guys, I'm going to give you guys a 35% off coupon for this month alone uh, to where you guys can sign up for this if it's something that seems to interest you. This is kind of the going rate right now, the premium, the elite, the masters. I have the masters, uh, but the most popular is the elite if you want the middle one. And, and it gives you the differences of what uh, the pros and cons of each package has for you. Um, just to give you a little example, I can have six of those charts all up at one time. Um, so that's why I like the masters. I can have six, you know, charts all up at one time. If you get the elites, you can only do four at one time. If you get the premium, you can only do two at one time. Um, and also alerts, you know, alerts expire in 14 days on the cheap one, up to 90 days on the masters um, and so on. So it changes and you can do a max per scan, only 25 stocks, 100 stocks or 200 stocks. Um, automatic anchoring. Um, but anyway, you can guys can kind of scroll through the pros and cons, but this is a going rate on these packages. And like I said, on top of it, if you want to add the coupon that I'm going to put in the link in the description of the link in this video that I'm going to post for you guys, um, it's going to give you 35% off. Okay. So even on their yearly, if you want to get 35% off the yearly, that's even going to add a huge bonus to you guys over just the monthly rate. So you've got the yearly rate here, it averages down. This is the normal that they do a 16% off, uh, off of a yearly, but you guys are gonna get 35% using my coupon code. Uh, but with that being said, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you on this session. Uh, but I just wanna give you guys a great analysis of what this tool is all about. Um, I think it's a very useful tool. Um, but by all means, guys, if you got any questions, feel free to comment in the uh, description down below. And if you guys need lessons on how to trade, guys, I do teach this. Um, you can go to my website at magictickerstrading.com. And we actually cover a three-month class coming up in September. Um, and it gives you a breakdown, but it's under, under the magic classes section here. And I've, we've got 16 spots available, by the way. Um, I've taught a lot of different um, <laughs> traders how to become full-time traders, but I've got a breakdown of what it is we talk about, and it's a lot to do with options trading. Uh, we do trade some big board stocks, um, some penny stocks, OTC stocks as well for some of you guys that like the over-the-counter stocks. But I break it down here for you guys. It's a three-month class, and we've got a limited time where you get 25% off for the entire class. Uh, if you guys want to sign up for that, it's coming up on September... 20th through December 18th. So very, very in-depth class, guys, to get you guys to where you're consistently profitable, making money. Uh, you get to trade live with me every single day. Um, I'm live streaming just like I'm talking to you guys now with our entire team. And we're covering all different aspects of stocks. And you get a lesson every single night. It's also recorded as well. So you guys can go back and review. Um, but with that being said, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you tonight. Please feel free to like this video. Subscribe for more. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. And anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Whether you're brand new to trading or a seasoned pro, generating winning trade ideas and experiencing consistent trading success just got a whole lot easier. Magic Tickers Trading doesn't just provide you with high quality trade alerts and high probability setups. We emphasize education every step of the way. With our daily interactive live stream trading, live stream education courses, and exclusive one on one coaching, opportunities are sure to come knocking at your door. Let us shorten your learning curve, build your confidence, 
and help you maximize gains with our live trading support and education. For more information, visit us at www.magictickerstrading.com.